Shalom, coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Um, this lesson is going to be titled Spiritual Warfare, right? Because, you know, It's not, it's not a, what I'm, well, what I'm growing to realize every single day, more and more every day, because the spirit of power you held by Shemino Shai is, um, you know, supping with me and revealing this information to me. Um, you really are alone in this. Now, you do have the brotherhood, right? And you might have a close brother that you're close to. You talked about certain things, but end of the day, you're still alone because um, I always like to I always like to compare it to war. Right. If you watch the show Vikings or any type of show, you know, war like show back in the ancient times, it could be Spartacus, um, Vikings, um, any type of show back then where they had big wars, one army versus another army where they f fought with swords, you know, not a new age war with guns. It's a little different. But back then, it's, it's like you guys would train, you know, you guys would be in your 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 army, right? You know, you have your own lives. Maybe you have a close brother that you're with. You guys train in fighting and skills. You know, you laugh. You you have good times. You drink, etc. Um, but when it's time to go to war, you're ready because you have to make sure your, your swordman uh, skills are, are sharp, right? You constantly have to sharpen your sword. Working with your sword, being one with your sword, right? Because that weapon is gonna either protect, uh, keep you alive, or or keep you, uh, or kill you, depending how well you are with your sword, right? You have to know it in and out, right? And this is a spiritual war, right? So I like to use the analogy of the war because, like, when you go to war, um, you know, you guys, you might be with your close friend, whatever, but when you go off into the war into the battlefield, like, you're on your own. Right. Now, if you're young and you're, you know, you just started, you know, your first fight, right? You wouldn't be in that war anyways, unless the the elders, right? Your elders thought you were ready, right? But even then, you might have one elder just watching your back a little bit here and there, you know, because like this is your first time, you know, in war, so you might make a mistake, you might slip, right? Um, and he might back you up, and he might, you know, pick you up or whatever, or they might fight with you for a little bit. But in the day, like. You know, you're by yourself because, like, he's not going to stay there forever. He has his own things to do. He has his own demons or own enemies attacking him. So he has to defend himself, right? And as you grow into the, you know, you go through every battle, you know, maybe you're in your fifth battle. You're not going to have that guy watch you because he didn't need to watch you like that anymore. Now you're a man. You should be able to fight on your own. If you die, you die, right? But the whole point is you're not supposed to die. <laughs> you know, you want to stay alive. Um, and... When you're fighting in that war, it's just you against all the demons or enemies. Same thing. Or adversaries. Right? So, um, you have to realize that, you know, you're really in it by yourself. Right? Um, there's a scripture I want to get. Uh... Uh, Salakia. I'd like to turn the airplane mode so I don't get interrupted. Um, what's it called? Work. Yeah. Wadi Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Hashem Rakhakadash. So it's Philippians two and twelve. Okay, Philippians two and twelve. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So that's a perfect example because um, 
you know, when Yahweh Shai was with the, the, the disciples at the time, which, which became apostles, when he was there, he was like the big brother, the big brother that's been through all the wars, you know. You know, he's been through all the wars. He has the scars. He has the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He has the experience, right? And he's teaching his, uh, his understudies, his disciples, like how this is what's going to happen when you're in war. You got to deal with this. This is how you uh, confront this uh, enemy or this demon because we're in a spiritual war. So this demon, right? You, you deal with him like this, right? This is how you deal with your brother in this scenario. This is how you deal with this demon in this scenario. You know what I mean? So he's teaching them how to deal with these demons, Right? right, and they're working, they're growing under him, and then when it was finally time for him to leave, it was actually when the time it was actually when they were ready, because you know, Most High does everything; he doesn't do anything by accident, right? Nothing's by coincidence that Yahweh left at that time. He left for a bunch of other reasons, but also because the disciples were ready. He did this, the Yahweh didn't need to be there anymore to to guide them. And to teach them the ways of spiritual warfare, right? So that's why he left. So is this like the example I said when you know you're young and you're learning and you're growing? You have that person watching over you and teaching you and showing you things. So because you don't know, you know, you don't know yet. You have you don't have that experience. They've been to war and they've got the the scars and the experience and stories. So, right? But it says. Much more in his absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because now, when he's gone, you're on your own. You don't have. They didn't have Yahweh Shai there walking with him physically anymore, right? Not in the flesh. Yahweh Shai is always there, right? Um, if you can understand that, but he's not there physically. Like I don't have Yahweh Shai standing in front of me, talking, like you know, saying, talking, telling me, okay, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. No, he's not there like that. He will come through in brothers. Right? Sometimes you talk through people, but you have to have that spiritual discernment to see that, right? So you have to be practicing your skills. So like the point is that he said to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So you gotta you gotta really be because it's life or death. Just like when you're on the battlefield, it's life or death. Right? So all your senses are in height are heightened. You know, all, everything's on, right? That's how you have to treat this this uh the truth. You have to treat it like that because it is spiritual warfare. All your senses should be on all the time. You shouldn't get lazy. You shouldn't get tired. Right? Now, you're still in the flesh, so it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're not Yahweh Shai. You're not perfect. But, um, but, uh, where is it? Okay, I'll just read this. Um, Hebrews 13 and 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Yahushua HaMashiach, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right? Um, James 1 and 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Right? So we're supposed to work to be perfect, to perfect ourselves. Because right? that's what how Shai did. So yes, you have to understand. You're gonna take hits. You're gonna get scars. You get some. You're gonna get cuts. We take them. Take them. You keep it moving because it's war. Like if you're on the battlefield in war, it's life or death. If you get a cut on your arm, are you gonna stop fighting? No. No. If you get stabbed in the leg, are you gonna stop fighting? No. Right. Even if you get stabbed in the chest, are you gonna stop fighting? No. Right. Unless you're an Edomite because they're cowards. But Israelites are not going to stop. That's why those Vikings, you know the spirit of the Vikings, they were, they were Israelites. I like to use them for example because they fought to the death. Even if their arm got chopped off, they're still fighting. Well, I got another arm. You know? So we're supposed to be try, uh, trying to be perfect. Right? Because this war... Right, you gotta get better at your craft. Uh, 
Uh, I swear, I'm pretty sure I'm spelling it right, but let's just... Powers. <clears throat> Bear with me. Okay. Proverbs 27 and 17. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend, right? So, and Yahweh Shai said we're, we're friends to him. Right? So when he's subbing with you, you're his friend. Because only your friend's going to sub with you. Right? So he's sharpening you. You're getting sharpened by Yahweh Shai himself, spiritually. Okay, so when you get that rebuke, you know, from a brother, it's your Yahweh Shai talking, right? Or sometimes your Yahweh Shai would talk to you when you're by yourself, but, you know, it's coming from him, right? So, because it's a spiritual war, right? So this is a scripture I actually wanted to get into, but the spirit just led me to these scriptures. Um, second... We're going to go to Micah. <clears throat> and in war, you don't get tired. Well, actually, you do get tired, but you don't stop moving like I was saying before. You can't stop moving because it's life or death. If you stop, you're dead. Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Right? So, like, as soon, if we stop, if we rest, we're dead. Just like on the battlefield, if you stop and you rest, you're dead. You can't stop, which is why you're supposed to be training, right? You constantly be training, constantly be training, constantly working your craft so you don't get tired, right? But like I said, um, it takes time, obviously, to you have to build that through experience and and you know have a teacher, which is why you have the, the apostles, the elders, the apostles and the elders on down. And other brothers that are going to show you and teach you things. Right? But you're not supposed to rest. Because it's not the time for us to rest. It's not the time for us to rest. We're on, It's a battlefield. We're fighting demons. We're fighting demons. We're fighting wicked de demons on high places. Wicked demons on low places. Demons everywhere. Everywhere we go, there are demons. Constantly. Demons in your family. Demons on your woman. Demons that jump on your body. Constantly fighting, constantly. So you can't rest. You can't. Right? Because huh. Job 38 and 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Right? You have to do it like a man. You gird up your loins. Right? You can't rest. You can't get tired. Now, like, if it happens, you know, you're like I said, you're still in the flesh. You just pray for the, to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that he gives you that knowledge with an understanding through a brother or he maybe you tell Yahweh Shai will come through self, like, talk to you in your head. However it happens, you pray that it happens to remind you, like, hey, man, get up. You got to keep going. You can't stop. Right? We're not done yet. You still have more to go. Right? Because you're in the flesh. You're like, hey, we're all guilty of it. It happens. It happens. Even when I was in the world playing football, like, you get tired sometimes when you're playing on the on the field. You get tired. But my coach used to always tell me, like, you're supposed to train in the off season so you don't get tired in the season. When I understood that, I was like, hmm, that makes total sense. And that's how I trained. I trained harder in the off season, right? So when I was in the season, I never got tired when I played. And it did happen. I never got tired. I could keep going. And when it was the fourth quarter, everyone else is tired and huffing and puffing. I was ready to go again. Just relentless. Right? Right? Because you're a soldier. You're a soldier from the power from Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right? 
Yeah, two, uh, Second Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahushai HaMashiach. Right? right? He chose you to be a soldier in his army, in his spiritual army. You think an arm, uh, a soldier of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is going to get tired? He's going to complain? I'm not saying it won't happen, but keep those complaints to yourself and keep it moving. Right? Because this is serious. Like, you'll get left behind. He'll get rid of you. He doesn't care. Now, he does have mercy on you because it is, yeah, you know, he's a balanced power. You know, your brother, Yahweh Shai, he have mercy on you. He'll tell you, he reminds you that, yo, you can't, you can't be sleeping right now. You can't be getting, oh, you got to get up. Right? And then when there is a time for you on your downtime, you got to train. Right? Because there's always a battle coming. You got to train. You got to train. You got to study. You got to read. You got to watch the uh, lessons. You know, you got to pray. You got to, you know, you got to constantly be working on your craft, constantly sharpening your iron. And when you're doing that, that's, that's the how is I supping with you. He's making you do that. Okay, go do this. Go do that. You know? Right? Because <clears throat> it's serious. This is a war. <laughs> this is a war. Right, you don't want to you, you don't want to die in a spiritual war because that's when you die in a spiritual war, you bug out and you're gone. You fall into the world and then you take the chip and you're done. You're finished. You're dead. You catch a missile or something like or something else. Right. Uh, Hebrews. Four. I'm gonna start from nine. There remaineth there there okay, Slakia. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. Yeah, the people of Yahweh which are the Israelites are gonna rest. We all gonna rest, but it's not it's not yet for that time. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Yeah, so as soon as you rest, that means you stop doing your work. So you stop working. Right? But a soldier doesn't stop working until the, the war is has a uh, the war is done, right? Until there's peace. You know, they, they fought other enemies, destroyed other enemies. Then they can rest. Then the soldier's done. He, he's done. He doesn't have to pick up his sword again. Right? As Yahweh did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter in into that rest. Right? So you got to labor. Just like Yahweh, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai, um, and the, 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 the elect and the angels uh, labored to create everything. Right? We have to labor right now. So we can get that rest in the kingdom. Right, because Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and the angels—they're taking notes. They're seeing what you're doing. Is he getting tired here? Is he stopping? Okay, well, and they're accumulate. You're accumulating um, uh, your spiritual bank account. It's tallying up based on the works that you're doing, the labor that you're putting in. Right, you're not putting that much work in. You're not getting that much money that's accumulating. If you're doing a lot of work, you're getting a lot of money. It's very simple. Um. Lest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and, and, and is a discerner of the thoughts and, and intents of the heart. So that's, you know, that's the truth, right? And the truth comes with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you know. When you speak the truth, it cuts people. Right? It cuts these demons. But you can't get tired cutting demons. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. <laughs> A soldier that is that's tired killing enemies. Right? When it's a time of war. Yeah, I'm a soldier. I'm tired. I don't want to I don't want to kill any enemies. I'm tired. You know. You guys do it. You guys do it. You know. Um, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to do it right now. It's silly. You know, the angels are going to laugh at you. It's like, what? What do you mean you're tired? It's war right now. You're not understanding you're on the battlefield. It's war. Like, what do you mean you're tired? Right? That's why right up, uh, gird up your uh, loins like a man. Right? Like, there will be a rest. You will get to rest. That's, that's what you get to look forward to. There will be a rest in the kingdom. Everything's going to be great, but it's not that time yet. So you got to keep killing. Keep killing these demons. Keep slaying these dragons. 
right? Um, so now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 10. Three. Second Corinthians ten and three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, right? And I just mentioned the the truth, you know, the scriptures, uh the wisdom uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That weapon, the Bible, is what pulls down strongholds, is what casts down imaginations, you know, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. Anything that's against Yahweh, that's what brings them down spiritually, right? And it manifests physically, right? So, and also in bringing into captivity every thought to the beings of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, yeah. So that's bringing every wicked thought to the obedience which the obedience is in righteousness of uh, Yahweh Shai, right? So it's um you can't stop because there's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. There's a lot of demons that need to be slayed. And when I say that, I don't mean you go looking out, going uh, to going to people and starting up stuff, right? Antagonizing people, and you know, and causing them to get angry. That's not what you're supposed to be doing, right? It's a war. One confronts you, you deal with it, and you keep it moving, right? If it comes to you, you'd keep it moving, right? And, you know, and you'll know when it comes to you, whether you're in the vicinity, if something happens, whether someone confronts you and something happens, you know, you'll know when you're supposed to slay that demon, whether it's a demon for you to slay, because everyone has their own war, right? But that comes with the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and faith, you have to believe. So now we're going to go to Romans 13 and 12. Romans 13 and 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Yeah, because when we're going to war. I put on the armor of light. Cast off those works of darkness. Right? Those are demons. Cast them away. Cast them out of your, your vicinity. Right? That's you have to constantly be a praying, constantly, constantly be thinking on the, the, the scriptures, you know, constantly watching lessons as long as we can watch lessons can tell that everything gets shut down, you know, constantly studying, constantly taking notes, constantly learning, even learning the Hebrew, Right? Because that's a Lashawan, Lashawan Kadash. So your words, your prayers will be more um, sanctified and uh, more worthy to be taken to Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. You know? Um, so if you can learn the Hebrew, I suggest you should learn it. I'm learning it right now. And it's just a great thing to learn your language, your heritage. It's funny, more more Hebrew I'm learning, the more English, the more English is becoming harder to um, pronounce. It's very strange. So I never really had a problem pronouncing words. But as I'm learning the Hebrew, like English is becoming, um, I, don't, I care for it less. Which you should, right? Second Corinthians 6 and 7, by the word of truth, by the power of Yahweh, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, right? So you put on that armor, right? To the power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. Right, because this is war. You need to put your armor on. You need to go to war. 6, 11. Ephesians 6 and 11 is the last one. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Okay. For we wrestle, for we for we wrestle, Slakia, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
So this is what we're going against. We're going against all of this. And you want to put down your sword because you're tired or this person is annoying you. Really, this demon's annoying you. You don't want to deal with it right now. Um, you know, oh, I'm tired. I want to do something else. And you want to put down your sword and you're on a battlefield and you're dealing with this type of... You're dealing with de these type of adversaries. Yo, you get taken out. You get taken out. Right? Because, yeah, also, yeah, we are... Or, we are all fighting our own battles, but we are still one of, of one body. Right? So if one part of the body gets, uh, stops moving, stops doing its job, the rest of the body is going to eventually, they're going to tell you, oh, wake it up. You're going to try things to wake it up and stuff like that. It wakes up, okay, it keeps it moving. But if it doesn't wake up, they have to disregard it. They have to get rid of it. Right? Now the elect, they're all going to be working in one body, so they're not going to get tired. They're not going to stop. Right, they're gonna constantly be fighting. Right, but we're dealing with these type of adversaries. This is serious. They got this. There's some some like if you're playing a game, these are like boss level adversaries, like the last boss of each uh, um stage. Right, verse thirteen. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Right. And you're doing this so in the time of um, Jacob's trouble, which has already started, right? You're able to stand. You're able to be stable. You know, have be grounded, right? Because the hour of temptation, you don't want to. You need to have your armor on. You need to have your armor on. You need to have your sword ready, sharpened. Okay, because you've been practicing, you've been getting ready. Because this is all, all of it is to work out your own salvation. You know. But also for the hour of temptation, because once you take, if you take that chip, you're done. But hour of temptation is gonna be very serious, which is why you have to go through all of this to get you ready for that, right? And also to prove your works worthy, because faith without works is dead, um, right? And build your spiritual bank account. But the hour of temptation is one of the main things, because if you take that chip, you're finished, right? So, um, like, I, I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, the Most High uh, kind of gave me a revelation this morning. I decided to make a video on this. It just makes sense, right? We can't get tired. We can't stop. Can't. Now we're almost out of there. That's a good thing. We're almost out of here. If anything, you got you to gotta slay more demons, you know? Try to clean yourself up as much as possible. So you're deemed worthy in the sight of Yahweh. Because Yahweh Shai is already dealing with you. He's supping with you. But he's trying to, he's pleading your case to Yahweh. <laughs> so you got to deem, your, you got to prove yourself. Right? Before you can be uh, um, invited to the round table. You want to think of it as King Arthur. King Arthur in the round table. Those knights were proven. They proved themselves to be on that round table. Right? So like I said, I hope this lesson was edifying. Um, to the hopeful elect, uh, I want to close up by saying, Ka hala Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukah Kadash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and to the hopeful elect, pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal, Shalom.